Hello, Rob here from the Flanagan Homestead. It's time to hook up my irrigation system again, and I'm going to show you how to hook up a well pump system in a low, shallow creek that has some silt in it and get enough power to get it out. Uh, I went to set mine up the other day, and a pipe, uh, a tree fell down on a pipe and busted it up, so I'm fixing it. I'm going to show you the basics on it, what I do to screen the water out. Uh, I'll, I'm going to set this up. So just so you know, I, I have the water come in horizontally in a pipe and then it drops down to a vertical pipe. I'll show you that more towards the end of the video. But uh, I have a very silty creek and so and a lot of sediment and branches and stuff coming down. So we got to screen the water out. So I'm going to put this screen that has half inch holes around it and then a regular uh, window screen is going to go over this. I'm going to extend it beyond the pipe because that gives more area for water to get through and shoot down here. I'm also going to cut some slats in the pipe here uh, to create open space and put the screen over it and then water can seep into the pipe here and then run to where my pump is. Uh, part of the reason I need a, you can take well pumps and uh, I did some investigating and I forget ex the exact degree, but you can actually lay uh, a pump that's designed to be vertical at an angle in a creek and I tried that originally, but it did not work well. Uh, you might say that there's different pumps that lay horizontally, but usually they don't create the type of pressure that you need to get it up the hill, which I need to do to get it out uh, into the pasture. So I needed a vertical well pump and I needed a way to get enough depth and so today is showing you the trick that I had for that. So I'm a terrible artist so most people would laugh at the thought of uh, me trying to draw a picture to show you this. But uh, we'll go down and see the real thing in a minute later in the video. But I have this hillside coming down and the blue represents the creek water. There's never any depth in this creek because it's a very silty creek and anytime anything gets any depth it fills up with silt so there's no way to pump out of it. So what I have done is I've built a mini little dam right here that fills up with water and then I have the six inch pipe that you saw me working on that runs horizontal and then it runs straight down right here and then we put our well case uh, pump in this way so the water runs through the pipe it drops down into the bottom here and the pump pumps it out of there and the extra water just flows out back into the creek. Here's a time lapse of my uh, setting up the sediment screen. I'm creating some holes that the water can flow through. I will be putting on the half inch screen here to give it form to hold the other screen out. And then the window screen will be the finer screen that goes around the outside. Okay, now that I've got this put together, let's take a closer look at it. I have this half inch screen or wire that I attached the end and stuck out here to create rigidity before I put the window screen over the top so the water can filter through here and through here with the holes in the screen being as small as it is the silt and sediment and branches and twigs and leaves are going to catch on this and so I wanted to create a very large area that water could seep through so that it'll keep come, pumping through. You're, you might say you don't need that much surface area to get 10 gallons per minute which is a, what I'm going to be pumping but uh, as uh, sediment blocks it off, there'll be water coming through here, here, and here. You know, you could get well over 100 gallons per minute in this pipe if it was just free flowing. But you want to keep the sediment out because it's good for the pump. I think I forgot to mention I did most of the securing of the screen with uh, just the vinyl electric tape. It will hold up to the water. Uh, it'll stay sealed to itself. If it doesn't hold to the pipe, it might push it further up the pipe, but it won't slide off because of the water pressure. So uh, inexpensive and easy tool to use. The hardest power each year getting this set up is getting my equipment up and down this trail. I don't know if you can see how steep it is on the video. Okay, here we are coming up to the creek. Let me get on the other side. So this is where the pump is. I'll show you more of that later. This section, there's a big piece that's gone here. I've already taken it up to the dump. A tree fell on this and broke this off. So that's what we're replacing. So this is the female end of the bell end of the pipe. I'm gonna slide that in there and then we'll force the water through here. So you can see around my pipe, I have a piece of plywood that I'm going to slide in this groove that I have in the cinder block. 
Uh, I came down here and poured a footing on one side while the creek flowed over here on this side and then I made the creek flow over there and poured a footing and I built a cinder block wall with a slot in it that I'm going to drop the board in. Now the board doesn't fit super tight. I don't want it to because it's hard to get out in and out. I, you could see some styrofoam that I had staple on here. I used to use that every year around the edges and everything but I don't mind if the creek keeps flowing through some because I only want to take a small portion of the creek water anyway. Okay, every year when this is out, this these grooves fill up with sediment. I've already cleaned it out some, but just wanted to show you. It usually takes grabbing a stick and pulling this out, getting this groove clean, so that the plywood will fit in it. Got old feed bags, torn up old sandbags that we'll throw up in these corners. Just anything we can to seal up around these edges. As uh, you can see, as I'm finishing up the blockage here, uh, the pipe is a couple feet off the ground and it's a way back towards the back wall of the dam. And there's a lot of space in front of it for water to fill up. As I mentioned before, this is a very silty creek. And as the summer goes on, this entire pond will be almost completely full of silt. When I take the gate out at the end of the summer and the winter rains, it'll flush it back out. And then I'll have to dig some out before I start using it again. But uh, there's over a thousand gallon pool here and the silt will settle out when it gets calm water and so that'll help keep the uh, silt from running into the pipe. So you can see the creek water continues to flow down into the grooves, comes down and then around the sides. Uh, normally I get a better seal than this and I can easily but I kind of was in a hurry to do the video. But uh, there's plenty of water right now, maybe later in the summer I'll seal it up when uh, when I need it to. Okay, while we're waiting for the pond to fill up, so I started this, put this in about five minutes ago, and you can see we've created a, quite a pool already. Um, this pipe that was here was shattered because a tree fell on it, and try as I might to take it out of this bell, which it's, uh, wasn't glued, but it's still, after years of uh, soot and sediment and water somehow getting in there, it would not pull out. I was banging around and whatnot, and finally I had to drill a hole right here and another hole right here, and I drove a forming stake through it, so there's a big metal stake on either side, and then I whacked that with a hammer on both sides, and it finally came out. So that's, that's how I had to pull this apart. And here is the moment you've been waiting for. There's the water dammed up so that it goes through the pipe. The pipe runs horizontally as the ground continues down. And then when I get to where there's enough area, I have a five foot straight up riser that uh, the pump, the well pump is sitting inside that. You can see the water hose and the electric wire coming out to it. It runs down in there. I pump the water out and the excess water just pours right back out and the feet continues flowing. One more feature I have right here. I have a screw on cap that I put on the end of this elbow right here. So if there's any sediment that gets into the pipe and it's going to start getting up to the well, I can screw this off, let water flush through, and then screw it back on and the water will fill back up. So every year I start with a fresh, clean pipe. One other challenge with this system is, uh, because I shut it down in the winter and it's above ground, you know, if I left water in there, it's going to freeze. And so is that going to be good for the pump? It's not designed to be anywhere that's freezing. Uh, I, every year I drain it out and try to flush it clean and then leave it hanging dry, but then it could seize up while it's dry. 
So, but I do have my poke usually hanging in here dry every winter. And then I turn it on for a couple seconds. I try to turn it on for a couple seconds every month uh, just to spin it so it doesn't seize up, rust up or anything. And so that it's still spinning the next year. And here's an outlet for the irrigation system. Water that is being pumped up the hill to where we need it. So there you have it. You found out how we get water going through a vertical six inch pipe uh, from a creek that has uh, lots of water but no depth. So we create that depth by putting a horizontal pipe in, forcing the water through the horizontal pipe to the vertical pipe where the pump is, and we start pumping our water. Thanks for joining me on the Flanagan Homestead where Christmas trees are my business, teaching including horticulture is my job, and outdoor projects are my passion. Hope to see you again soon. Be blessed everyone.